I did find a gift card. I'm like, oh! Um, I, I, I thought that they closed. Uh, it's like, no, don't close yet because, like, vinyl's coming back and you've got an opportunity to, like, come back. I mean, close some stores. Like, restructure. Close some stores. You're going to have to do that. But vinyl's uh, coming back, man. Like, it's like people are going to, you know... I, did, I didn't, but it's not vinyl. It's not any significant. I don't think it's going to be economically significant. The, the it's the going vinyl. up. Like it's going up to a certain Load level. Blowing. Load blowing. Load blowing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, for me, it was more of a nostalgic. I remember me and you used to go there after school all the time. You know, we get off at, y- at Yorkdale, go see. I know, uh, I know. Go see, go check out the stuff. Check out the three, the three, four floors at HMV. Yeah, I, I bought a fair. I bought a bunch of CDs at. Uh, mm-hmm. At, at HMV, it was it was your it was it was after Sam. Well, you know, Sam the Record Man was an icon, but it was only one location. I think it was a dump. It was, but it, I was, went but in there it, was once. but it was only one location. They had this nostalgia, but there was one spot. HMV was the store you went to to buy the buy yeah uh, buy, buy buy CDs. Yeah, if not, I think that might have been another couple of chains. But you know, HMV was one of the big ones, and it was okay. the last. It's the last one to go. No, no, no there's, there's still Sam. Sunrise. What? There's still Sunrise. Oh, okay, okay. But we'll see we're going to save that for the episode. So let's play okay. that intro. <coughs> Everyone keep quiet. Ooh. Cut that cough out. Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to the Crew Roundtable Podcast, featuring Big V, Marco, Gino, and JR, with your host, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. Visit us at CrewRoundtable.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Crew Roundtable, brought to you by the CrewRoundtable.com. Catch us at CrewRoundtable.com. And download our podcast at Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and wherever fine podcasts are distributed. <laughs> Anyways, let's go around the table here. We're going to go uh, um, Big V normally who's here is absent in this uh, place uh, for this recording. So, Marco, welcome. What up, dogs? Wonderful. Welcome. Uh, Gino, Welcome. Thank you very much, Champ, once again for having us in your beautiful home uh, to record another episode of Crew Roundtable. Uh, this topic is very near and dear to my heart because uh, those of us sitting around the table, we are truly part of the generation that caught the tail end of HMV. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it holds a special place for all of us. We all bought music, right? So Yeah, yeah we, yeah, we, we all is, bought music at it. HMV. It's... JR, welcome. Hello, or... hello Champ. Again, uh, Echo... Uh, echo uh, uh, Gina's uh, comments. Uh, yeah, we will. Uh, we, 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 we are like the perfect group to discuss this. Yeah, we, we all we grew up entrenched and ingrained in HMV. Exactly. So we're going to be talking about HMV and the closing of HMV <coughs> music stores uh, across Canada. Uh, Jr., do you want to open it up? Um. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, Jr. or Gino. I'll, I'll 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 go ahead on this one. Okay. Because, go ahead. Um, uh, just to just to put some context on it, um, as as Jr. was saying, we are the perfect group. Um, maybe not. Maybe we're more suited to talk about this than Black Lives Matter Toronto. Uh, so you can go and listen to our show on that. Um, but uh, for this particular show, really, the death of HMV and the rise of digital music are tied together. Yes. Uh, so digital music has been around for more than a decade, but only recently. Did it become the primary revenue stream for recorded music globally? So in 2015 is when digital downloads basically took over the entire revenue structure for recorded music. 2015 is when it tipped. 2015 is 2015 was a tipping point. Oh wow! I, th- I thought it was a little further back. Okay. Uh, yep, that's when the sales of digital downloads overtook physical sales of albums and CDs. Wow. Okay. Uh, now the uh, now, HMV in Canada was a offshoot of the parent company, HMV, in England. And HMV in Canada operated as its own concern for a while. But they reduced their CD and their DVD inventory. They added more vinyl albums. 
Um, they added more sort of uh, fan collectibles, apparels, T-shirts, mugs, it's tchotchkes. It's a whole yeah. bunch of junk. A whole bunch yeah. of yeah. junk. It was merchandising. Personally, it was just junk, was junk apart from the music. And yeah. that was their attempt to make up for the sliding music and movie sales. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they tried to stay alive. They tried to change. They tried to change into like a pop culture, hot topic type of store, right? Um, but they were too late. And even though the merchandise that they had in the store was successful, uh, it couldn't bail out the company. And in January 2017, HMV announced that after 30 years in business in Canada, all 102 locations would be shut down. Uh, I do want to mention that this was a listener topic. Again, once again, pulling it out of my mouth there. Yes, go ahead. So listener this, topic. This was a listener suggested topic, and you can reach us at Crew Roundtable on Twitter with the hashtag Ask the Crew. So let's kick off our discussion here. Um, what are our memories of HMV? Oh, man, it's, uh, it, it definitely goes back to high school. And buying really pretty, fairly obscure stuff. Uh, walking the racks, looking through the uh, l- l- looking through the racks of CDs. I mean, uh, I never, I never went to uh, HMV when there were tapes there. I was too young to be taking any interest uh, in, in in buying music when, when cassettes were still in favor. But mm-hmm. by the time uh, I was going to HMV, it was exclusively CDs, uh, and it and it was past the point where they had like where they were just repurposing. The vinyl depth uh, bins, so you didn't get CD cases with like twenty four foot long plastic. Uh, thing. Right. This was twenty four uh, inch. Th- yeah, the twenty four inch. So they <laughs> twenty four foot. Yeah, twenty four <laughs> inch. Sorry, you're right. I thought um, that was to stop uh, thievery. No, I think I think it, it was used. It, it, that was incorporated, but yeah. I think they were reusing vinyl record bins. Okay. So the height, because I saw I saw the same thing with. Uh, with 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 tapes and it, it was probably a combination of the two i think they started with the bins like oh we don't want to throw all these bins away because it was a phase out it's not like vinyl went away instantly so first vinyl kind of phased out and they had the the tapes come in and then i guess they just kept reusing the same racks and had these yeah. re- crazy ass plastic yeah. things but now by the time i was going to hmv they were you just exclusively using cd yeah. height racks there was no uh yeah. There's no plastic uh, clamps on there. Marco? Uh, I bought a s- substantial amount of uh, CDs from HMV. Oh, yeah? Yeah, around in high school. Yeah. You can yeah. tell we're all old and dumb because we wasted our money on physical media. No, 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 no. I probably have all Let of Let me tell you something. Yeah. It's the physical media that makes me, that, that'll make me spend the money. I won't buy something digital because I feel that digital is air. What? To to a degree, I, I we'll get back to that one, that, that point. But well, no, no, let's go into it right now. No, no, what hold do you on. Mean, what, what do you but mean? Let me, air? You know, hold on. Let me backtrack because I've been to HMV two. Bought the bought my you know bought uh, not memories, all the time. Memories, it's memories. downtown. It was a trip to yes. go downtown for us, right? Uh, I, flipping the racks, you know, hearing the clicking of the CD covers, you know, snapping. You bought what you want, some 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 stuff that you couldn't find. You'd find it at HMV, mm. and and yeah, at this time it it was all CDs. Um, that's what we were shopping for. I think every box set I have came from it's HMV. Also, oh, yeah. oh, the yeah. box sets! The box, box sets, sets were amazing. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think though um, uh, to counter the, the the point about being fools in physical media. Oh yeah, I think Go if ahead. we were gonna buy invest in a physical media, at least CDs, I think at least. Uh, have uh, have had the longest longevity out of, out of anything, uh, maybe not vinyl. Vinyl probably was a lot around for longer, for, but for modern, more compact, I'm pretty sure it's already blown back the the, the cassette tape. You know, it, it, it's it, it, I mean you can still buy CDs. CDs still exist as a, as a format. Yeah, and they're still playable everywhere. I mean, Blu-ray players I believe are backwards compatible. Of course, so you can still play them. Um, they were the first non-contact media because uh, vinyl, you physically touched uh, the record with a needle mm-hmm. and, and you, you, you could literally wear, play, the, play the, 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 the record until it could no longer play. Mm-hmm. I, wouldn't, um, I almost would imagine that was by design because those music companies are such fucking scumbags. <laughs> 
that they would use lower quality vinyl just so it wears out faster and you have yeah. to buy another copy. It is a lot different uh, these days. Cassette tape, <coughs> the, 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 the magnetic strip rubbed against the magnetic head. Mm. So, uh, you know, that, 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 you know, a couple of plays that, you know, Rub. <laughs> that, that a couple, uh, you know, you play that a couple hundred times, uh, especially if it was a really good album, yeah. you wear that, you, you could easily wear that out. No problem. Plus yeah. the, the myriad of other issues that cassette tapes always had the, the bunching, getting, getting wrinkled, getting tied up getting pulled out, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's the one physical media that generally was, has last, lasted a long time. If, oh, yeah. you, if you had a quality pressed CD without with, without you know with a good edge, you yeah. that, didn't, that didn't get CD rot. Um, yeah, you act, the CDs lasted think, a long time and they can still be played because you'd never touched it never touched anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're, they're pressed. Yeah, yeah, they're pressed. Yeah. Well, That's they're right. pressed yeah. and they're com- and they're completely encased in plastic. Right. Yeah. But the laser doesn't do anything to the CD. So yeah. If we were going to invest in the physical media, it was probably the best one to invest in because you can still use it. I mean, will it be forever? No, nothing's ever forever. Even yeah. stone tablets stopped getting used at one point. But um, <laughs> it, it's going it, it, to, it's going to, I'm sure it'll be around for at least another 10, 15 years. As so, long as there's discs being sold out there, something will play CDs. Did you get custom fitted for your tinfoil hat? <laughs> <laughs> in terms of what? What are you talking about? In terms about? of the music industry putting out media that would oh. eventually deteriorate. <laughs> oh no, no, I, I, I don't. Uh, I see. I, I, I've I see. seen their scum. I, I've read about their scumbaggery. Don't, yeah, so uh, I, 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 yes, I wouldn't put. A, I agree. Now, yeah, that, that, that was just a joke, but I wouldn't put it past them. For they having, are dirty. I'm sure. I, I, I am a hundred percent sure somebody came up with that idea in a board meeting. And and I'm sure someone what? said, Johnson, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> Wait, what idea? Yeah, About we'll, uh, we'll letting just, records uh, wear out quicker. We'll just uh, sell this records uh, to wear out vinyl faster. record. They'll play it I, enough I, times. I, I, it'll I just will not doubt that that crossed. Thin out on its own. I'm, sorry. I, I will not cross. I, I, I will not give up on that. That did cross. Multiple record executives mind the quality of the vinyl, of decreasing the quality of vinyl. Any, to increase record sales. Any physical media will will eventually wear out. I do agree with you. I personally worked through. Um, I ruined a VHS tape copy of Pulp Fiction just from watching it over and over again. I personally ruined a copy. Um, so I'm very familiar with copies wearing out. And that's the one thing that I really loved about the CDs because um, CDs are going to last longer than me. Right? Every CD that I bought, I can still play it. And it works, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think you'll be able to find. I think your your ten to fifteen year time frame. I think that's pretty spot on. I think you'll be able to find a CD player for a long time. Oh yeah. Um, you can still find record players, and people are making new record players. So I think there's always going to be a market for a CD player. Now you probably won't be able to go buy one at Walmart. But you'll be able to go on Amazon or something. Uh, you know, go to the website, use our Amazon links, crew round record player. But they also, but they also a record they, player. But they also come in different different. Wait, wait, are you saying they're not making record players anymore? No, I'm saying that you could find one at Walmart. No, you can. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood you. So yes, I thought but, you said not Walmart, but no, only no. online. I'm saying that you may not be able to find a CD player at Walmart because record players are a very niche item, right? You mean like a Walkman? No, like a, mean, like a portable CD player or, or an actual no, I or mean an actual like, standalone deck. Like no, there. I mean like an actual standalone CD deck. I, I can only see, bought that two years ago. I can see Walmart yeah, getting rid of it. But it, the, he, but the, okay, that's just one format. One you've format, got, right? You've got Blu-ray players that also Blu-ray play them. Blu-ray players that play, yes. Every computer, um, not so much the laptops, but almost every desktop has a CD. Uh, yeah, has any a CD computer with a with a burner. Yeah. Any, so, any computer with a burner. And yeah. So it's very wide range. It was a wide ranging. Uh, for a physical format, and uh, so that uh, touched so a lot of back. different technology. Let's bring technology. it back to HMV here. I didn't get to give my memory yet. <clears throat> sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. I thought you did. No, champ, please. Are you uh, going in for two memories? No, I didn't get. I did not double get to give my memory double yet. Double dipping. Double double dipping. dipping here. No, I did not give my memory. Okay. Okay. Like putting your whole mouth I'll give you a in the memories. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> my memories are my Go memories ahead. are two of HMV. Go ahead. Um, so the the first memory that I have of HMV is. Uh, with JR, JR and I went to the same high school, and I remember there was one day where we showed up, and it was in the middle of a snowstorm. So we're the two idiots that show up for school. 
Yeah. <laughs> and school gets school gets canceled, uh, and we end up spending the day. Um, I can't get home because my bus is stupid, and for some reason it doesn't run and bring me home in the morning. So I had to wait until the afternoon to go home. This is a school bus. No, TTC. TTC bus. Okay. This was back in this Public was back transit. This was yes. back in the old days. So I couldn't even get on a bus to go home. It, it was a high frequency during rush hours. Yeah. So it was the Q one hundred and seven. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so Jr. was nice enough to stay with me, and we ended up going to yeah. Yorkdale, and we got there before all the stores opened, and we were able to go to Yorkdale and kind of just walk around the mall and kind of watch Yorkdale come to life that oh, day, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah, that was a good day. That was that was a fantastic day, um, and then we ended up going to HMV, and I can't even remember what I bought, but again, going through the racks, click 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 click, going through cycling through the CDs. Um, so that's one. And then a second, I guess, general memory that I have as opposed to the specific one of being with JR that day is um, I loved going through the racks of music. And I used to just buy CDs at random, mm. things that I never heard of before. Um, blind buys. Blind buys. I never listened to them. And I would take them home and I would pop them in and I'd be like, okay, wow me. Show me what's on this CD. Uh, and that's how I bought my first Stone Roses CD. That was a, that was a blind buy. Um, and I still, I, you know, I pop that in now, constantly, yeah. today. Uh, it was just, you know, your generic best of Stone Roses CD or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I take so much uh, pleasure in listening to that. And I feel that there's something with putting on a CD and just letting it play and having the tracks that the artist wanted to put on that CD play for you. Mm -hmm. In uh, their order. In the order that they were originally intended. Yeah. Because that's I the artist that. presenting themselves to you. Yeah. Um, Marco was mentioning all the box sets. I remember buying a Led Zeppelin box set. Who here doesn't have a Led Zeppelin box set? Okay, so I bought two. <laughs> Right? Because there was the original one yes. with the four CDs in Remastered it. Remastered by Jimmy Page. Remastered by Jimmy Page. And then there was a second box set with all the leftovers, which was two, two CDs. Two CDs. I got it. Right. I got them both. I'm sure I'm sure we all have them. I'm sure it's sitting on your shelf on, on, on your shelf, It's Jan. there. But um the purple. I those think. those box sets were fantastic for someone like me who missed those acts on their original run through. And then being able to go and at a reasonable cost getting pretty much the entire, uh, and uh, uh, excuse my pronunciation, oeuvre of <laughs> an artist, right? <laughs> I, knew you, I, I, I knew you'd pop for that. Um, so uh, getting, being able to get the entire history of an artist, I found fantastic. Yeah. Um, going in and having, doing, the, doing the blind buys was great. You can't really do that on a music streaming service like Spotify or something like that, you'll be exposed to an individual song from an individual artist, but... Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Chad. No, no, I was just going to say, a, a, a good plus, a, the plus of HMV was that you could take a CD to them and say, hey, I want to listen to it. That's right. They would right? open it up and let yeah. you and let yeah. you actually experience yeah. it. You could listen That's to right. it. But the Spotify, you can listen to the whole album. You have to you have to pay a subscription. That's a subscription no, service. it's free. Okay. I have it playing at work. Then how do they make their money? Advertisements. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so maybe yeah. Every you subscribe and you so get every no three songs goes. Hey, this yeah. is brought to you by Chiquitos Tequila. Can you pick the songs you want to listen to? You can no. You choose the album. Oh okay. Um, and you can search by song. Okay. And on the computer, you can play the individual song, but on the app, it's a little bit different. No, on the app, it's different. And that on the is, app, and it's that different. Is, and that is a much different experience yeah. than actually going through and saying, I'm going to go to the letter F mm. and flipping through the racks, or I'm going to go to, I'm going to be courageous today, and I'm going to go to the letter S, and I'm going to flip through the racks yeah. and seeing a Space Hog CD and saying, wow, that looks like a, that looks like an interesting cover. Space Hog. <laughs> right? Yes. And then, and then picking it up and saying, you know what? It's $9.99. I'm going to pick it up. Right? Like, you don't, have that, you don't have that physical media in front of you where it's either an awesome album cover or it's something that will grab your attention besides just flipping through the app 
And we've discussed, uh, you know, the dating apps like Grindr and things like that, um, where you're just swiping left on people, right? It's like they've got 0.5 seconds to grab your attention, and then you flip, flip, flip. But yeah. if you go through, and you're going through racks, and you see something, you know what, I'm going to go to the B section today, and you see something called Black Sabbath, and then you pick it up, and you look at it, and you flip it over, and you start reading War Pigs, Iron Man, like, these are provocative titles that will get you to listen to the song. And you might decide, how many people went and did a blind buy of Black Sabbath? I don't know, right? How many people did a blind buy of Stone Roses? I don't know, right? All I know is that I did it. I know Black Sabbath would have been blind. By, by the time CDs Kiss came out... Kiss was a blind buy for me. Uh, by the time, by the time was, CDs was a came out, Black, Labis, Black Sabbath was an established... Kiss. Sorry, hold ba- on. Ba- Kiss Alive... Hold on. It Kiss was, was, it was a blind buy? It was Kiss Alive 3, Columbia House... It Columbia was the House. album of the month. Album of the month. They said, "Hey, mm-hmm. I didn't respond in time." I'm like, "Ah, fuck out, whatever. Take okay. it. Send so it, it over." F- it was a forced buy. Send it over. You were vol. You were vol and sold. Yeah, vol I was like, you sold, know what? Yeah. I need to buy a CD. I'm like, all right, I'll send it over. I won't. For work. the younger listeners, Columbia House was a gigantic <laughs> scam. Where? Uh, you no. Would- yeah, yeah, no. they were. They were. If you, you use them right, you get yeah. some good music. If you completed your thing, quit, join again. Okay, but okay, so let's define it quickly. But it was yeah, a quickly. It was a it was a buying club where you got X number of CDs for free at the beginning to start to stop sign up. I think I joined and, like four times. And you were able to buy X number of CDs at half price, and then you for a fu- penny. and then you fulfilled your obligation by buying CDs at club prices. This later was, on, which were a little bit inflated, the full, the full price. But when you did the math over all your purchases, oh yeah, if you, you bought you came out ahead. smart and didn't buy double CDs or anything like that, yeah. Yeah. then eventually it ended up working out significantly cheaper yes. than buying your CDs at a location like HMV. And that's what I did. I would join, fulfill the membership, quit, join again. I'm sure we've all had multiple memberships. We started the death of HMV by going to Columbia House. No. No, no. No, Shame. Shame on all of us. But thanks for for bringing that that topic up. I think think what really brought, what everyone acknowledges brought about the death of, uh, uh, of, of the physical music stores is digital media. And this this is really where the slime ballness of the of the of the media of the media companies really came got drained above the surface. This is where it came to light. Um, digital media, everyone knows what an MP3 is. MP3 is a music file format, and and, the, and the, these guys were genius. They gave away the encoder for free, so you could make. Your own your own files, and then they sold the decoder. Wait, wait, who 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 gave away an encoder? The uh, they they gave away their encoder so that sorry, who's who's the Fraunhofer Institute? Okay, they invented it. They invented MP3s. They invented the MP3 format. Okay, go yes. ahead. I believe they released, or they allowed it to be to be copied uh, to, for people to make their own for small time uh, coders to make their own encoders. Or so they could convert their existing music to MP3s, and then they turned around and sold the decoder to the hardware makers, who which was a nascent industry at the time where the MP3 players were coming out. That was a new thing. They sold their the, the decoding technology to them, and now that's where they made their money. So that you you needed because they realized they needed MP3 files to drive the purchase of the MP3 players. So, and since nobody was selling them at the time, they realized they needed to, to jumpstart this bandwagon. So that's why they allow, That's why nobody got sued for creating an MP3 encoder. So they basically made it open source. No, they didn't. No, they, they, they made it. They, they, they gave. They made it free licensing, but it wasn't open source. What's the difference? Um, they weren't. No one was able to modify the file. The, the, the file format. They weren't able to take it and make tweaks to it. You had to use it as is. You had to use the MP3 format as per their structure, but you didn't have to pay royalties to create the, mu- the songs. Now, a di- royalty free is not open source. There's royalty, a difference. Royalty free is not open source. Yeah. Now there were there were a, 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 a slew of music formats. There was a AC or AAC, I think, from Apple. Yeah, there yeah. There was Vo- Vogue, Orbis. Uh, uh, oh, no, those came course, those came afterwards. The the top. This is where the slime ball is, and this is where Sal's justification of buying 
hard media actually came to light. Um, the the first one the first one actually into the fray was uh, Apple had their AAC format, which was only playable on Apple formats. Was it a lossless format? Because no, M- it was not a lossless format. It was M- a lossy format. You MP3s really stripped the music out. Oh, they, right. they, yeah. oh they yeah. Removed, it, they it removed moved, some stuff to make it. They, they made it crap. They, they make yeah, it smaller. Yeah, there's a, there's a trade-off. I, I'm not going to disagree yeah. with that. But you, for for the size, they sounded great. Relative yeah. relative to their size, the size. They, they sounded pretty good. Uh, but then there was, there was Microsoft's Windows Media Player. WM, WMA? WM, Windows Media WMA, Audio. Yeah. WMA, WMA. Yeah. WMA. And they and they 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 brought in DRM because um, DRM being digital digital rights, rights man- digital rights management, where basically the rights holder controlled what you could do with the files, which was fine for a while. But the problem with with these with these locked files is either a you were locked to a certain type a, a certain brand like with Apple, or with Windows where. You could only transfer the music to the device after this with with spe, with particular software, and only after that software went and checked uh, with a, with an online database on if how many how many uh, a to authorize the device you're listening to. How many devices have you already authorized? You can only put it on so many. You could put only put it on so many uh, players, and. Heaven forbid you bought another device, you couldn't convert that 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 media to to match the new device. Sony had their own Sony format, their own, yeah. which with the same bullshit. Well, I think they think they bought into the Windows Media Audio, but um, it was encumber. It, it was difficult to say the least. And as soon as, and then afterwards, when when. Uh, when uh, when Windows discontinued that whole that whole uh, thing and shut down the the servers, nobody was able to play that music that they purchased. It went it went straight down the shitter. Um, you mean uh, like Zune? The Zune. Well, not just the Zune. The Zune was was their was their media player that that prog- that did it, but they flogged the DRM management system to. All the other people who are making the hardware, mm. Sony, uh, maybe Samsung, anyone who was making an MP3 player but didn't want to then also make a Windows Media format, uh, sorry, uh, an audio format that had DRM, they didn't want to invest that kind of time. Windows flogged that. The Zune was was their attempt, but it was it was a half-assed attempt. But what they were really pushing was Windows Media Audio with the DRM. So continue. To but but when then when they shut that pro, when they shut that down, anyone who had purchased music couldn't play that music anymore. You know you you, you lost it. So that gives credence to you. The only reason AAC didn't do that is because Apple didn't shut down. But even the even they ended up going away and just adopting MP3 straight up. Really? Oh yeah. They were the ones that started that. They start. They were set. First, they were first. It became an option. You could buy AAC at a higher quality or high quality MP3s, and I think at the end they ended up. Now they sell everything as MP3s. Really? It's, yeah, it's DRM free MP3s. Well, it goes to show you that I don't buy my music online. Number yeah. one. <laughs> the, 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 right? once, once Apple did that, everyone else went the same. I way. thought it was sold as AAC, and then if you wanted to, you could. You could uh, bring it down to MP3, which what, was what, shittier at one point. But I think I think they as they were trying to push it as, as you could free. They were trying to give you more freedom with what you've purchased because that was the same problem. Right. People weren't buying it because they realized, well, fuck, I'm I don't have an iPod. I, I, I don't have an iPod, uh, or if I try, or, or you know, or I, I can't play it over here. I can't play it on my sound system or this, that, and the other. Uh, what good is this? And I think their sales were dropping off, so they 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 they, dro- they they switched over to MP3s for more f- to give their listeners more flexibility. So, <clears throat> okay, we got our memories out of HMV. Um, uh, there is there is actually one more memory that was sent oh. to us. Um, I uh, this came to us through uh, Twitter uh, at Crew Roundtable. I just put set out. Does anyone have any memories of HMV? And uh, we do have one memory that was sent to us by a listener, and they remember, much like what we discussed discussed here, um, they actually purchased 
their entire bookshelf stereo system from HMV. Oh, oh uh, wow. Yeah, and uh, so they bought their bookshelf stereo system. They bought Led Zeppelin four, and they bought Moxie Fruvis. <laughs> and then they joined Columbia House. So this was th- this was this was uh, this was a listener's first purchase at HMV, and this is what they remember the most. Oh my God, Moxie Fruvis. Moxie Fruvis, yes. John Gomeshi. I way back in Moxie Fruvis. I, I just, I just can't. I just can't continue right Topic now. Topic for another time. Uh, it is. So we've got all of our memories out. Uh, let's talk about what this effect is going to have on the Canadian music retail scene. Uh, so. The cost of physical media is going to keep going up now, unfortunately, because we've got less people selling it. Uh, so it will get more expensive if you still choose to buy CDs. And I personally, I think also because it's becoming a novelty. It, it's it, it it is becoming more of a novelty. If there are any artists, I choose to support the artists that I like by buying the CD instead of buying a single or listening to a single or streaming a single. Um, I do like to have the entire package that they're trying to present to me i do like having the artwork that goes involved that that is part of it um the lyrics sometimes i like seeing who actually plays on the song and seeing who wrote the song because if you follow one artist you'll see over time they will have certain people who come and work with them and then go away and you can follow that progression through on the uh on the album notes so i do like having that i'm sure the cover art also has some play in it because some because vinyl like vinyl had was big and there was actually thought and work put into the art cover exactly the, you yeah. know well but I mean, you, they still you, have that but it's but very difficult happens, to see and it's right? underappreciated uh, yeah yeah now yeah now it's just a little icon now uh the comparison is made with books because people have e-readers however we still have books so books and e-readers, they have a different place in the market. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on that, but keep going. Okay. Uh, so uh, if we're talking about how the effect is on the Canadian music retail scene, um, is it all the pirates' fault? Like we mentioned, for streaming all of this music everywhere where people were not going out and purchasing anymore. And is there a place for someone to still sell physical media in today's you know, internet, always-on, connected reality? JR, go ahead. Um, okay, for, first of all, in the ebook thing, the reason books have not evaporated is because uh, a lot of publishers fix ebook pricing to be equal to equal to paper paper or more expensive. There is when when it really costs less because you're not shipping. Now it's probably marginally less because it's still the, the content has still it still has equal value. But I mean, you're not shipping anything. You're not you're not you're not consuming these paper resources. People expect the e version of the book to be a little less expensive, and they are not delivering that because they are trying to strangle. The, I think they're still trying to keep. They're forcing think, paper. Uh, yeah, I oh, agree. No, the, the publishers I are, think, are I forcing paper. I think the author paper. always gets the same amount. It's just the the publisher who's trying to. The author, yeah, they're, they're trying, the author they make gets more. the same amount on an e book versus a physical book. Yes, I think so. They get the same cut. Yeah, they get the same percentage. I think I think so, or the same or the same amount. I so can't how remember. does it that work? The so then, why would the publisher be trying to to be trying to prop up paper books? Because people see that wait 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 a minute they didn't have to send this to me. There's no shipping on this. They didn't have to ship it to the warehouse. Why am I not paying a lesser price? Right? Are they, 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 ebooks they, less expensive than paper books? No, they're not. They're, it, only in some cases with certain sales, but. Generally, they are they are not priced uh, competitive. They they are priced exactly the same. They are pre- pretty much priced almost the same uh, because they don't want it to succeed. The the the, uh, the, uh, the, pu- the publishers don't want electronic paper electronic books to succeed. That's the total opposite experience of the music industry, where they went all the way back after Apple brought out iTunes. They went all the way back to being. We're going to sell singles again it, because for yeah. a time you could not buy a single. It's right. e- okay, it's easier. It was easier when when for to to turn your CDs into MP3s than it is to turn your books into an ebook. So it's not. So th- this is where uh, the Fraunhofer Institute created this giant pool of music to create that e- e- that, that demand. Um, you couldn't do that with your books. 
the only source of ebooks is the publishers, and they can choose what what they want to publish. All right. Um, what was your se- what was the second comment you, you made? About, uh, uh, is it is it all the pirates' fault for just streaming music everywhere? No, see, w- one thing we one thing uh, that uh, we've learned from Netflix is people uh, pirating is complicated. Yes, is it, it is. something we touched about touched back in our cutting the cord uh, episode. Yes, it's free, and sometimes it's super easy. But sometimes, if you're not technically inclined, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so pirates the thing and. Um, I blame the music, and so clearly people wanted electronic music. Sure, some people wanted it because it was free, but I think a lot of people wanted it because they could carry a lot of music in a smaller device that lasted longer than the old Walkman. The than old the Discman. Walkman, yeah, that's right. There was there was there was some really good advantages to e-music to electronic music. No skipping. And all all the um, all the music industry what are you carried, carrying a turntable in your pocket like a. Sorry, Jim. What are you That's talking right. about? The, 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 the discman. No, discman skipped discman, all the time. No matter so, how much so the discman, the discman, discman. Sorry, the discman, discman skipped. Always skipped. Apologies. That's right. Go ahead. And uh, accepted. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, if the and because they did not step up to fill the demands, the pirates piracy filled it. I remember when Apple, when the Beatles and Apple Music were. Coming to an impasse, they, when they were de- they were they were debating releasing um, the uh, the whole Beatles albums on uh, on on the on the, on the iTunes. iTunes store, and they're like, oh they're, they they still haven't they've been debating for years and they, they can't get a great deal, and I remember thinking about this, I can go out and download that whole catalog that whole catalog now yeah. for free, so they're not hurting the fans, they're hurting themselves. By not providing, by by bickering amongst themselves over nickel, you know their their version of nickels and dimes, which is millions of dollars. But because they're getting held up over the over fine details and bullshit like that, they were just like they're cutting out. They were cutting out their own legs. I'm like, why are they arguing? I could go take it. I could go download it illegally right now, and they won't make any money. I'll still have the format I want. Yeah. And they're and 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 they're. Their their worries are 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 not going to stop anything. They're, they're 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 not they're 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 foot dragging has not prevented me from getting the format my the music I wanted in the format I wanted. Can I give you a quick story about the Beatles specifically? And, okay. And Apple. So, um, Big V, who is conspicuous in his absence from this show, um, he downloaded for me the entire Beatles catalog and burned it to cd okay okay uh after when the deal was reached eventually with apple to put the beatles music on apple apple came out with uh beatles themed gift cards with a nice little package where it was branded with beatles there were photos of the beatles on this package and you could get gift cards specifically to download Beatles music. And I went to the, uh, uh, I I went to one Apple store. I can't remember where it was, but I went to the Apple store and I said, so I've already got all the Beatles music. Can I just have this pamphlet, this paraphernalia, this gift card? Can I just take this? Can I buy this from you? Because it was so well done. From a marketing standpoint, it was fantastic. And the guy said, you're not the first person to ask to just buy the paperwork. He said, I can't give it to you. What? You can't give it to you? He could not give it to me. I said, no, no. Like, I don't want to buy the music. I just want to buy the paper. I just want to walk out with this paper and not activate the gift card. I just want this pamphlet. He said, no, I can't give it to you. Because he had people come in wanting to buy that because it was so well designed. So to your point where you're saying that the pirates are not to blame, I agree with that. Because the people selling the digital music did such a good job of making you want to buy the digital music. Mm -hmm. They went out and they marketed it successfully. And they said, you know what, you can go out and buy, you can go get free copies of things 
okay? But you're gonna download garbage. You're gonna download viruses, you're gonna download MP3s that are not the right music quality, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. They came out and they said, we're gonna give you high quality material and we're gonna charge you X number of cents per song. Uh-huh. And Apple single-handedly brought back the s- selling singles because nobody was doing it before Apple. They got rid of cassette singles. They got rid of record singles. They got rid of every single. They wanted you... There were CD singles, too. They got rid of all of that. They wanted you to buy the full album for the one song that you wanted. And Apple said, screw you. We're going to go the entire opposite direction. And they ended up changing the music industry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They ended up changing it. But, you know, I'm not not, not saying that piracy has no impact. Piracy is a big impact. It does. But you don't... But you fight piracy by giving people the opportunity to, to buy what they want. There's always going to be someone who doesn't want to buy anything. Yeah. And, you know, and they're going to, they're, they're, and they're going to invest their time uh, way, uh, having to hunt for this stuff. But as you, as you know, said, you know, you, you get variable quality. Uh, but when you, when you go and pay your, pay your money, at least you get, you know what you're getting. Yeah. And and they give you good quality, well, but the, 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 this is where the this is where the music industry really hurt themselves. They resisted. They didn't see that. Oh well, they're downloading because that's what they want. All they saw that they're stealing our money, and my and now I can't afford my fucking yacht and and stuff. Whereas and whereas Apple's like, well, these guys well. Clearly, you know, this format is really it seems to be really uh, popular. Electronic music is really popular. Let's create our own player. And we'll sell we'll sell them the e music for it because they clearly want e music, yeah. And so we'll we'll sell them we'll give them what they want to pay for, yeah. You know, and that and that was what the the the, the, the music industry was so hell bent on controlling what you what you use like you know you, you and then you know again going back if you you bought one if you had one device that played that played CDs from the and then you then you got an e music player. They wanted you to buy the same music again for every different de- every different every device format. every different format. They didn't give a shit. They expect if you had six six devices that played a different format, they expect you to say buy the same fucking song six times. Mm-hmm. And you can only you can only tur- you can only tighten that screw so much before it breaks. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can only you, you, you only bleed you only bleed uh, a horse so much before it dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at one point you have to concede defeat and they were coming off decades and decades and decades of being the sole point of providing music in the format that they told that, that they specified. Speaking and this this was a complete this completely disrupted their handhold. Speaking speaking to your to your point mm-hmm. um to go back before CDs and before cassettes, um, it's vinyl that is pretty much uh, underpinning independent music stores right now. Yeah. Uh, so if we're going to uh, let's let's talk about how the independent record stores are holding up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so HMV closed; they had 102 locations. They sh- shut down. They pulled the they pulled the plug. Uh, Seventy of the HMV locations are being taken over by Sunrise Records mm-hmm. in Canada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Sunrise, they were ahead of the curve. They moved over to being sort of a pop culture locus well before HMV. Oh, okay, um, okay. And they kept their overhead low, and, HMV, or, and Sunrise is still in business today. Uh, they're serving a niche market. They're having stores be somewhat unique instead of the HMV philosophy, which was we're going to throw Dr. Who mugs into every store, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and there is, now there is a market for Dr. Who, but they threw them into every store where you walked into each store and you saw the same items. Um, I can't believe that they were actually serving their local population with what they were selling. They were just going for the, here's what's hot. We're going to put it in every store and hope that it sells. Yeah. H, uh, Sunrise did things a little bit differently. They gave their owner operators a little bit more leeway in what they offered to their public, and it appears to be working. Uh, vinyl sales in Canada, thirty-eight percent increase in, two, in 2016. Preach it. Uh, yes, Champ is a huge vinyl advocate, um, but not to rain on Champ's parade. The raw numbers for vinyl are tiny. They are yeah. a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. 
300,000 vinyl units sold in 2016 in Canada. This is Canada. Uh, CDs sold over 5 million units in Canada. And globally streaming, the downloads were in the billions. Mm -hmm. So vinyl, there is a place for it. Some people, audiophiles, think that the vinyl sound is warmer. It's it's more yeah. dirty. There's hisses. There's pops. There's some physical element Hold to on. it. You're saying all the things that I don't hear. <laughs> there's no hiss. Well, no, there's well, no I, I would imagine modern vinyl doesn't have that yeah, problem. No, mod, yeah, but no. I, there, I, there is something to be... I, I do miss... Um, yeah, the album covers are nice. I, I, miss the, I miss the details in the album covers. I do miss the... The lyrics. That's that. That's one thing I, I really miss. Uh, the, the, the lyrics. Yeah, the lyric sheets that came in the booklets. No lyrics come in. Lyrics come in the CDs too. Or, that's what I'm talking or, about. Oh, you're Sing, saying on the digital. Uh, yeah, no versus, versus, yeah, as opposed to as opposed to digital. The, yeah. But then know, again, that's that's that's. That, the, but that's the stuff that goes away to make that made e music cheaper too, right? If but, you're not. But that's also a bunch of old men sitting around the table just crying it because you can just look up lyrics online. Yeah, it's I not know. the same. It's, it's not, not the same. same. It's not the it's same. Not the it's same. not the same, same as thing. when you're listening to the song. You, you could like and you pop it on. exactly. You could you could just flip the book. You don't Man. have to go to go look it up. I mean, yes, everything everything could be looked up now on the internet, but the, it was it was a nice little package. It's, it was really, you know really look, nice you, production value. Exactly. You, uh. you you put the CD in. You lie down on your bed there, and you'll flip through the pages of the the the, the book. There were there were there was there was something to the experience. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, it's not. But you know, we're not we're not too old that we have to say that new sucks because it's new. Exactly. I, I hate. I absolutely loathe when, when anyone in, the, especially music artists or, or anyone, takes up that position where new is awful because it's new. You know, it, it may not be as good as old yet, or it's different. But you know, you were you were new yet. You were into the new stuff, especially especially when respect to music. You know, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I talk to many people my dad's age, um, and they're like, oh, your music sucks these days. Like, you know what? Your parents said the same fucking thing to you. You know, do you not see the, 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 the stupidity of what you're saying? Like, you, not all music is great and you don't have to like all music, but right. if you can't vocalize why you don't like something and the only reason you dislike it is because it's new. Yeah, no. Yeah, I know. My dad went crazy uh, when I finally taught, taught him how to download stuff. <clears throat> I'm like, sure. And he, um, he download, like he keeps modern stuff. He he's like yeah, good. Uh, yeah, he That's keeps good his mind open. He's he's a very open minded musically. Yeah, um, I don't know if you remember, Gino. Year uh, a few years ago, uh, I brought up a stat with me and you there. Uh, by the time you're 40, you don't listen to new music anymore. You just listen to what you've been listening to, and that's it. It's also harder to listen to new music when you hit a certain age because you're not in that. Like I, okay, so again, going back to the yeah, Berries, sure right? You look for new music. I remember that I would just sit on the couch some days, and I would watch much music, and I would just watch random videos. Much music, right? Like. <laughs> you 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 can't really do that nowadays no. because they don't play music. They don't anymore. do that anymore. Much right? music isn't much music. Right. So you can't. You're 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 not exposed to a bunch of different things. You have to go out and find them, and you reach a certain point in life where you just say, "Ah, forget it." Right. I'm well, not because, because you don't have the time. You don't have the time to invest to time. learn about new artists. That's right. But it, it, and and that's fair if you don't have that time and you don't listen to it. That's fine. But if you're going to just write it off because Bashing new, it. new music sucks, well, that's ignorant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's why I like to keep, I like to listen to the live radio because you'll hear new bands, new music on there, right? And then you're like, hey. I'm getting exposed to new music through my girlfriend's daughter. Right. When right. right. we're, we're in the car, we'll play her stations. I mean, not all of it's great. We'll discuss some of it. But yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. bad music. These people can sing. You know when my dad you know? stopped listening to new music? When? Beatles. He hated them. <laughs> hated them. Hated them. Couldn't stand them. Couldn't stand them. He said that he said they were a bunch of hippies. He said, forget it. He's an Elvis man through and through. But it's done forget. with it. Done with it. That's a it, really the long drought. Start, when <laughs> done with it. Yeah. When, done with it. I'm finished <clears throat> with it. No more. When, when the Beatles started, they were a cookie cutter boy band. Well, they were they were basically yeah. trying to be Elvis. Well, when I mean, exactly. I mean, their really memorable stuff came after they when they got really famous and 
they realize they can get away with experimentation and not lose their fan base. Uh-huh. But in the beginning, like, love, love me do is not exactly... It's not saying something. I want to hold your hand. No, exactly. It's written, which is one of their most famous songs. It is, but they're not. They weren't saying anything. Not they were just writing a song. Did they write it or the corporation write it? No, I'm pretty sure they wrote everything. John, John, and Paul corporation wrote wrote. very almost all of their music, either either together or separately. But I think they were the powerhouse writing. But in the beginning, it was it was not. They weren't taking stands they weren't experimenting they were writing po- they just wrote popular music and they were they were in suits like everybody else at the time oh yeah very cookie cutter oh yeah and then they realized you know what we got this fan base we can experiment and we're not going to get penalized for it and that's where things went and the musical history was born the beatles yeah. and the monkeys were going head to head oh see the who monkeys was more popular the monkeys it's the british invasion people. man the monkeys the monkeys now the monkeys had their music written by other people well, and they then were, they were a tv band that exactly. became a band that was a that was, yeah, that was a tv show that some people don't realize nowadays it's like a lot of people that oh they were a band they got their own tv show no no no, no no it was the opposite they were they were put together for the show hold on hold on hold on I want to hear about vinyl from the champ. Yeah, I was just going to say. Is our, he, he, is, he is the vinyl champion. So, so tell us about vinyl and where you get your vinyl now that HMV is gone. Yeah, where so do you get I, did, it? I did want to say, let's circle back to the vinyl. So um, I, did see, I did see something on TV that um, there, I think out of Brantford, there was, a, there was a guy. There is a guy. Sorry, there is a guy. He, um, he, he opened up a vinyl a, a pressing plant. So he saw some press, uh, some machines from Europe. He's like, "Hey, I want to buy them." They said, "No, we're not going to sell them to you." I said, "Well, let's get in a partnership." So I think I read about that guy, and he recently shut down. No. Yeah, I don't think there are any more vinyl pressing plants in Canada. It's brand new. This know, guy got know, brand new machines from Europe. I don't think there are any more vinyl pressing and plants in Canada. And his first pressing was uh, the new, um, the latest, the last um, Tragically Hip album. He his company pressed that last album. Oh, wow! And um, these, anyways, these press because there's not much pressing plants. He said, he said the existing plants, the machines that they have that are pressing the albums, they're taking from working machines, trying to keep them going. Oh, okay. So there's factories that are still using old technology pressing records. But this guy out of Brantford, he's got brand new machines from Europe, and he's pressing. Records and this was only a few months ago. It wasn't that long ago. This is Ooh. we're talking about the winter time, um, and so to move on from that, that you know, at the I just thought that we you know we were pressing records here in Canada. So again. where do you buy your vinyl? <laughs> so now? most most of my vinyl comes number one. It comes from Amazon. They so have they have a vinyl so they have a vinyl section. The problem. You're uh, the reason HMV closed down. I don't think so. Is that it? Is no. that what you're? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> I've walked into HMV. I've walked into their vinyl section, and their vinyl section fits in my washroom. Have you ever bought vinyl from Sunrise? Because Sunrise actually makes a point of having vinyl. Uh, you know what? Sunrise is out of my way. Is there a Sunrise in Vaughn? There might be now. They're taking over 70 locations. Okay, but not before. <laughs> not before. But but will you go to Sunrise now Listen, there's if a, they're more convenient for you? Listen, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes away, 10 minutes from, from Mark's place, there's an actual vinyl store. I've been in there a couple times. I've bought a couple albums. I've bought a, a record cleaner. So I have done, like I've gone into physical stores and bought stuff. Uh, you know. I'm not taking them taking money away from the local local shop owners. But online and and I go into a brick uh, brick and mortar store to buy vinyl. Doesn't it doesn't have to be a a franchise, cross Canada franchise. Mm-hmm. So for you, will you continue to buy vinyl on Amazon? Yes. Yes. Will you incorporate any physical brick and mortar stores? In your vinyl purchasing, I have, and I will. I'll walk into one. I mean, the thing is, is that it can't be out of the way. I'm not going to go downtown to go to go shop for vinyl when there's, you know, when I can 
if I don't go to the to the local one, I can just go online and 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 get it for, for you know. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, I mean, yeah, it I mean does. it's convenience. The I thing it, is, it's convenience. No, no, one's, no, one's, no one's arguing. No one's disputing that. But I think it goes along with the physicality. You can, you know, uh, if you're gonna go on and on, well, I like holding the record and uh, I like reading all the stuff. I well, like owning that, something physical. No, no, but that extends to the buying process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you like having something in your hand, then you like shopping for it as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 That's why I've never bought. Okay. I've bought one digital download in my entire life. What? One. One? A four. No. An You're a EP. Liar. You're a liar. A live EP from U2 from back in 2004. That's the only one that I actually spent a few dollars on. Because it's not because it, it, it wasn't something that was pressed on a CD or vinyl or anything. It was a digital download only. So I, I spent it. Right. I spent the, the four I or five can, bucks. I cannot believe that you have only no. purchased one digital download in no. your life. No. No. I don't believe in uh, I don't believe in digital downloads. Not that I don't believe in it. It's just again, I gotta have something physical in my hand so as a trade, as a trade off. Oh, right, right. That's a that's a it's a val it's a valid concern. Right? You know. Like my games, like video games. The only way I'll buy a video, a digital video game, is if it's like two or three bucks, five you've, bucks. Wait, wait, not more. Are you telling me you've never purchased an app on your phone? No. I, they're I, all free. I, wait, wait, they're all free. Wait, 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 I have purchased apps. I, I support. But you can't. So have I. Yes, and I also support purchasing. Are you telling me that you have never purchased an app on your phone? Yeah, but you don't go into the store and buy an app and and, and install the little CD in your phone and. Uh, but you don't do that. But it's it's the same thing. You're buying ones and zeros that are downloaded to your phone. Yeah. How is that different I know from your and music? I, and I know it's always there. When I if I lose it, I can always download it again. But for some reason, you draw the line at your music purchases. I cannot. I, I, I it's like fuck this. I'm not spending money on on fucking air. <laughs> the dinosaurs are running wild today. Air is the probably dinosaurs the wrong are term running to wild. use. I, I, conceptually, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, I, it's not a wrong term, but it's intangible. It, it, thank it's you. It's an intangible. In, intangible. Item. That's it. He's got it. He's got it. I unless th- I th- champ, I think you're making artificial distinctions. I, 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 I'm, unless I can hold it in my hand, it doesn't exist. Or it's an app for the phone. Or if it's a free download. Or if it's a free download, then <laughs> well, that I makes think, a difference. I think I think <laughs> I think, think in Sal's options uh, and, and champ's uh, opinion, you can, there is no physical there is no physical option to an app. Exactly. Right. It's not like yeah. uh, if you, if you going could buy, to a store and I'm sure, buying I'm sure uh, Age was, of Empires. If they came in like a little a little SD Bucks card CD. that you popped into your uh, yeah. you popped into your phone, he yeah. probably would buy that. Yeah. But music and m- movies that do have hard options and soft options, he goes with the, with, with the physical media. Yeah, I would go with the physical with, with, media with because the, with I the own app, there's it. only one choice. There's no choice with the apps. I own it. Where did you come down on our Windows 10 discussion? I don't I, think that was the same thing. That's not I the same would, issue. Wait, wait. What are you trying to <laughs> say about that? Issue. What are you trying to say about that, though? Would you download software? No. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I, I gotta side with Chap on that. When because when days, if your f- computer the, is not the, working, the gears, you don't have the gears are turning. No, no, no. <laughs> so, with computers, you need a physical media because when always the computer, because it's like trying to wa- fix a leg that's bro- it's like trying to fix your leg by a broken leg by walking on it. You cannot download the replacement. Uh, we should wrap. The replacement C- o- o- operating system image if the computer itself is not working. Exactly. Yeah, you need that physical. In the in the interest of time, I will concede to Jr. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's unfortunate. I have let this go intentionally. Let it go wild, um, and and we're gonna have to close it off. Um, Marco, what are your closing thoughts on the HMV stores? <laughs> I haven't bought a CD in years, so the end of HMV doesn't really bother me that much because I probably won't buy another CD ever. Even if there's even if there's a new box set that comes out, you won't go out and buy it. <sighs> <sighs> Don't Come tell on. me you're pirating. No. Music. 
I just listen to what I have right now, like what you said about at the age of 40. Really? That's can, that applies I, to you? I feel that that That's applies. It? Yeah. So you don't listen to new stuff? I listen to, I listen to the Sheep radio. Sheepdog. I listen to the radio. Like, I don't listen to Q107. I yeah, listen I to, like, new music stations for the Q's, most part. Q's mixed it up in the recent, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. They, 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 Do you ever the... feel that Q107 plays music that they shouldn't be playing? Because it's sometimes it feels like more often than not. I felt that. We'll, for we'll, a we'll get, we'll get that. Yeah. But yeah, but I don't want to get. I, I find that Edge plays music they shouldn't be playing. Really? I think they need to stop playing Nirvana. Not that I don't like. Not that I don't like Nirvana. It's interesting. They play. Okay, not not that they. I don't. I love Nirvana. It's okay to the, not like Nirvana the, the, because the, they're not that good. I, I enjoy their music. Uh, but, but Edge no Edge has a hard on for Nirvana. Really. But they haven't, you know, the band has not existed in what twenty years now, twenty five. How how long has it been since then? They celebrate. Uh, why one oh eight started sucking on the shotgun? <laughs> why one oh eight? That's, hey, hey, that's pretty cruel. Do you Su- guys, suicide is not is not a laughing. Do you guys want to put? I've okay. got a I've got a tinfoil hat for that one. Oh but, my goodness! Um, but we'll save it for later. I mean, uh, Ed, Ooh. Edge Edge Ooh. likes uh, Edge 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 has a real hard on for Nirvana like. Um, the the day the day of I don't know they they, they celebrate uh, the edge of the release of Nevermind they re, they celebrate uh, who who what was the who the the lead singer of Nevada what was his name uh, again? Kurt Cobain Kurt, 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 they Kurt Cobain. Ce- they celebrate his death Kurt Cobain's Birth. birthday and his death mm-hmm. as if they were fucking music Christmas the edge as if it was Christmas New Year's and Easter. All together. If there was ro- if there was music Catholicism, those <laughs> those are the three days Edge would celebrate as their as as their holidays. It was insane. Not that they shouldn't be in anything, but they are no longer an active band. The band is over twenty years old without any music. They don't get, and they were they were in heavy rotation. It was insane. You'd think that Nirvana just you think Nirv- you think their Nevermind was a year old uh, album. The way the way they fucking fawned on it and played it in, played in rotation, whereas someone like you two, a band like you two, where they are active, you get to you get to play their whole back catalog, obviously with de- de- decreasing frequency, but you can pick from their whole back catalog because they're they're active. They put out an album, and you know, they were putting out an album every two three years, and that 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 gives them the permission. To stay for, for the foremost, mm-hmm. but not not at the, the, but Nirvana did not deserve the frequency that that Edge has been playing them at. It's they're a great band, but they don't you can't you can't kick off new music yeah. because of because you you're ba- because the mantra of the uh, uh, of the station yeah uh, is is Nirvana. <laughs> it's like it's That's like funny. on the application form before name was do you like Nirvana? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Nirvana? Yes, no. Name, address, <laughs> <laughs> you know, social security number. That was the that was, I, I always joke. That's what the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what the edge wanted to uh, application form looks and, and like. You know what? For Y one hundred eight, it's President of the United States. It seems like they play that Q, all the time. Q Q one hundred seven will have Zeppelin. Yeah, Q one hundred seven had the equal that's okay. on, had an equal hard on for Zeppelin. Yeah, but that's okay. Because Q107 is rock. They, they played they, a lot but of they Kim were Mitchell, too, when Kim Mitchell worked well, there. Well, because Kim Mitchell yeah. worked there. But and obviously, also, they were also there was a, a conspiracy to play Kim Mitchell so he could pocket all the cash. Yeah. But the difference was just making that up, Q107 was an oldie station, so that they had to play. That that worked for their genre. Now, they're when you say oldies, you mean like the classic rock? or They were classic rock. Now they're, they've changed their, they've changed their uh, format. They play more new stuff. And weird stuff that shouldn't be. J, um, Gino, closing thoughts? Uh, I think that all record stations or all... <laughs> I, I think that all music stations on the radio should play more Depeche Mode, personally. Uh, when it comes to uh, the final thoughts on this subject, um, it's a shame that HMV closed. Uh, it's it's really is a sad day, but it's a market reality. So, I mean, you can only be sad for so long. If they were making money, they would have stayed in business. Mm-hmm. Um, I would suggest that you get your music where you enjoy it uh, and listen to it how you like. Just pay, make sure. Pay for it. Pay for it and make sure that the artist gets paid for the music. No matter what you do, 
make sure that the artist gets paid. Because if the artist doesn't get paid, then you won't have any new music whatsoever. All of that being said, I enjoyed having a store that had a curation of the CDs that were for sale. It kind of lended itself much more easily to discovery of new music. And every store seemed to have a community around it. Um, I think that's missing. I don't think you can replicate that with some online streaming service, Spotify, or I don't even know what's out there anymore. Radio was bought out, uh, Spotify, all, all, all of these things. Um, make sure that you pay for your music. Give the artist that you like money for making that music and expose yourself to something new. Try and find a way. Because if you expose yourself to something new, you'll be surprised with what you find. I'm not saying go out and buy Black Veil Brides <laughs> and stream all of their shit on YouTube, but YouTube is the greatest music player ever in the history of mankind. Take advantage of it, listen to something weird, and for all of our younger listeners, I recommend Pink Floyd, Echoes, put it on, close your eyes, and just take a trip. Wait a minute. Was it Echoes? Echoes. Echoes from Pink Floyd at the pyramids. Just put it on, listen to the whole thing, take a trip. Wait okay? a minute. What was Close your eyes and just was... let it wash over you. If you've never experienced Pink Floyd, what was that? Start there. What was that Pink Floyd album that Which one? Uh, I brought up to the cottage and you listened to it for the first time? It was two albums. Pulse. There you go. I you, remember. I remember Pulse, Pulse. You, with Pulse. the blinking light on the yeah, dot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You turned me on to yeah. Pink Floyd. Yeah. And my yeah. life has never been the same since. Oh, I mean, it was this just this guy would lie down and the <laughs> smoke would come out. From the <laughs> oh, it was just. It was just. It's like sad. I, I remember the release for Pulse at HMV. <laughs> yes. Pulse yes. at I, HMV had. I. They actually. I had, reserved it. Put five bucks down. You reserved <laughs> it. Okay. I went. I when went, they announced it. Yeah. I went back because the original release of Pulse had a red pulsing light. Yeah, I remember on that. Did you get it? The spine. You didn't get it. I didn't get it. I got it. No, I got one of the re-releases where there pulsing? was no pulsing light. No, I gotta light. change the battery. Yeah. Triple A. I regret that. Really? But for our younger listeners out AAA there, batteries. Go out. I gotta change. Listen to some Pink Floyd and change your life. Jr. Go ahead. Jr. Go ahead. <laughs> As, as you know, again, again, Gino was right. It's it, market forces, uh, natural market forces. Um, Son of a bitch, Sal, you're making me cry. Bringing up the Pulse, man. <laughs> <laughs> natural market forces uh, change the market really quickly, and you, you've got to move or die. Uh, the buggy whip people, we can't. Cr- <laughs> the, uh, buggy, the, the buggy whip the, the, people. The buggy whip manufacturers. The <laughs> you know they went, they went, they went there. They, Kodak did the same thing because they flat out refused to support a medium that didn't uh, involve uh, chemical processing. That's right. Um, and uh, you've you've got you've got you've got to evolve or die. And and the and the, mar- and the business market is. Is no no difference as much as the as much as the music industry tried to keep it the same with all with their legion of lawyers, um, we their lawyers are rich and we still have and now we, everything is digital music so we are, see how that went. Uh, sorry, HMV, we love you. We hardly knew you, and we're, we're gonna miss you. I think you knew them. Very, thank you, Jr. I think you knew HMV really well. True. <clears throat> I'm sad to see them go too because yeah, it's uh, you know the 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 store is is. We still have Sunrise. We I still can, have Sunrise. I can I can picture the Pulse display in my mind, and I'm welling up. <laughs> I'm fucking crying right now. I just I just pulled the, I just it. pulled the album off my shelf. I it just oh like that is that is that is an experience that. Younger people just simply won't have today. Go put the battery. Of seeing, a seeing a wall of new releases coming out. Yeah. And, and you bastard, you fucking made me cry. You oh, son of a bitch. It's okay. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I know. Go it, ahead. It, it, I didn't yeah, mean to t- clip on your time. Go. It's okay. Um, quick. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad to it's to see HMV go. But again, it's it's the market. You know, if no one goes in there, if they sell. <laughs> I'm sorry, GR Doctor Who mugs. 
they, they, they were, were, they were garbage Doctor Who mugs. Oh, I'm a okay. Doctor Who fan, but they were not great mugs. Okay. They, they were they, they were pitching crap. Oh, okay. The ceramic um, quality was just subpar. But um, I mean, and I felt bad, and I felt like, oh damn, no, because it's like vinyl is slowly rising, and you know what? Close down a few stores, shrink the physical space of some stores. I thought, you know, maybe if with some restructuring, they could, they could do it. But you know, they have their CFOs. That's why I'm not a CFO. So they they probably know better than me. But um, they will be missed. But there's still there's still Sunrise. There's still private mom and pop vinyl stores to get your music. Um, I don't know about CDs. CDs, you're still. Online, I guess. Amazon. And hey, go see a live show. Go support independent music. And then, and then, of course, you could go to the bars and see a live show, pay five bucks, get in, and, and watch some great music. Anyways, folks, thank you for watching us. I let this go purposely long. This is a long episode. It was a long trip down memory lane. But uh, that's the way the, the women like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> to close it off, if you have any um, show... Um, show topics uh, you can connect to us through Twitter at Crew Roundtable and use the hashtag Ask the Crew uh, to visit our web don't forget to visit our website CrewRoundtable.com we got our podcasts listed on there as well as Hot Takes with Gino he's listed on there too and you can find our feed on iTunes you can find it on Google uh, Play uh, Google Play and Stitcher Radio where all fine podcasts are uh, published Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Carl for suggesting the episode. And uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao for now.